YouTube, welcome back to another video. So today is Wednesday, uh, October 8th or 9th. Um, so yeah, so today I'm going to be working on, well starting working on the Grain Dam. Uh, I did order a new clutch for this thing. It is not the spec like I want and like what is needed. But uh, I did get a new clutch for it. So... This is the original six puck disc that I had. It has springs. It is a sprung clutch. So that was a stage three XTD. This is the new new clutch. This is the pressure plate. But they sent me the wrong pressure plate. This is for an Ecotech. So this pressure plate will not work. But the disc itself is in here. So this is the new disc, it's a stage 4, and it's not XTD, um, but this is an unsprung clutch disc, so hopefully this one will hold up, but uh, the pucks look to be about the same size, it's pretty much the same disc, just this one is sprung, and this one is unsprung, so it's going to be a little bit harder on the clutch pedal, but... It's alright, it'll work. So, pretty much uh, what I gotta do is I gotta get all this stuff out. I guess I don't have to get it out just yet, but uh, yeah, I guess I need to get the engine and trans pulled out first. But I'm gonna have to reuse the uh, XTD pressure plate or maybe the Banhoff pressure plate, which is what's in it now. Uh, this is the brand new Slave, GM Slave from Canada, which was like 80 something dollars for this, I'll just leave it in there, but that is a brand new Slave for it, so I don't have to worry about using eBay, cheap eBay parts, this is actual name brand GM stuff, and then uh, I did get some brake clean, I got some coolant, I got a new oil filter, new lifters, I don't know if I'm going to end up installing the lifters or not, um, because I really don't want to pull the engine all apart just to do lifters. But if I absolutely have to, then I will. But for now, I'm going to be replacing pretty much all the clutch stuff. And it sucks because with how small the Grand Dam's engine bay is. And with how compact everything is in here. As you can see, right down here, the transmission goes underneath all of my brake lines right down through here. It actually sits underneath all the brake lines. And so it's uh, it's actually really kind of a pain in the ass. So I have to pull the engine and trans as one unit out the top. Or I could drop the subframe out the bottom. I don't want to go that route. That's a lot of extra work. So I'm going to end up pulling the engine and trans out the top. And uh, separate the engine and trans. Do the clutch and the slave. And uh, I did get some new... Uh, ARP flywheel bolts that bolt the flywheel to the crank just because right now I'm using the factory flex plate bolts and they're a little shorter and they're not rated for you know high horsepower they have been working it is still holding and it's together but I don't know for how long so I definitely want to get the flywheel bolts replaced with the ARPs and uh yeah kind of go from there so I gotta get some tools out of the shed, and I'm gonna start working on this thing, and I'll give you guys another update here shortly. All right, y'all. So I went ahead and got everything out, anyways, and so this is the new slave that was in the box. And so, as you can tell, I ordered this October 23rd, 2023. It's been almost a year ago that I ordered this slave, and it was $88 from Canada for this. So definitely need it. So this is pretty much what is busted. And so pretty much how this works is, so whenever this is, it sits in the trans, it bolts into the transmission. This piece here sticks out through into the engine bay. So let's see. Uh, yeah, you can see it sticking out right there out of the transmission. And then the bleeder valve and the actual line clicks into it right here. And that's what that little clip is right there. So just that little bit right there sticks out of 
the transmission and it bolts in from the inside so transmission and engine have to come apart got to be unmarried from each other just to change out the slave cylinder which is kind of stupid design but it is what it is that's what happens so but yeah so i've got that uh this is the xtd pressure plate this was my original clutch i had in here whenever the first engine started knocking and i did the junkyard engine this is the original six puck sprung clutch disc and i mean it was doing okay it was holding up to like 50 percent throttle and anything over that it was slipping so i know david's looked at it he said the clutch disc itself still looks decent it hasn't like worn down through the rivets yet but i don't want to reuse this I mean, it did feel like a stock clutch, so it wasn't like it was hard to drive or anything. Uh, it was actually really easy to drive, but I still, this uh, Stage 4 kit is rated for like 327 horsepower, and the Stage 3 kit was like 280-something horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque. So hopefully this one will hold up just a little bit better. It is springless, so uh or unsprung so it is going to be a little bit harder on the clutch pedal but and like i said it is what it is so i'm going to use this disc with this pressure plate and i know dave was saying that i could take this up to autozone or o'reilly's and they can resurface it for free so i might do that uh and then here's the new arp uh flywheel bolts so it does say chevy and ford but I know I looked it up for the 3800 uh, like Camaro and Firebird, the 3800 rear wheel drive manual ones. And this is what it said it was, was this 7 16th kit. So this is what I ordered. I hope that these are the right size threads and everything because I just went off of what Google was saying. And yeah, these were like... 40 bucks 35 40 bucks something like that if i remember correctly i've had them for a while so don't quote me on that prices could have also gone up everything's been going up recently in price so i just want to kind of show you guys what all i have and yeah so this is pretty much everything that's going to be going in once everything is apart so i still have this um and then also on this pressure plate i had ordered the ecotech kit so I got the wrong pressure plate. This pressure plate's for the Ecotech, but the disc is the same, same splines. So I should be able to run that disc, no problem. I just can't run that pressure plate. So I did take some pictures comparing this pressure plate to this one and sent to the eBay seller. And I did tell them, look, I ordered the wrong kit, but I can't use this pressure plate. So they told me to send them some pictures and uh, I don't know, hopefully if they have the correct one, then they might actually send me the correct one and I can send them this one back. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough time for that. Because if I pull this engine out today, then uh, I want to try to get it back in as soon as possible. I don't want to have it out just for like two weeks sitting in the driveway for no reason. So, yeah, I guess uh, I'll just have to wait and hear back from the seller of the clutch kit and see what they say. And uh, kind of go from there. But for now... This is what the plan is to install all this. And I don't know if the Banhoff pressure plate is a little bit better condition than this one. I might use the Banhoff one. But it's just like a factory replacement clutch kit. So I don't know. We'll just uh, have to see. So, But uh, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to grab some tools and out of the shed and start getting this thing ripped apart. And uh, I'll give you guys another update here shortly. Put the blower over here. Got everything cleaned out of the driveway. I blew as much as I could from all around over here out into a pile in the yard over there. And then there's another pile back there. But got all the leaves taken care of. Got all the tools out of the shed. Chilling over here. Got the hood popped. So I guess first things first, I'm going to go ahead and jack this thing up. Though we're on jack stands. And I got to pull the front bumper off. And, uh, then I can continue on from there. So, y'all stay tuned. 
All right, you guys, so I got the bumper off, sitting over here. Went ahead and bagged up the bolts. So, now that that's out of the way, I can get under here. I need to drain the coolant. Uh, I don't really need to drain the transmission fluid yet, but when I pull the axles, it will drain the transmission fluid. I need to drain the coolant out. Uh... I don't need to drain the power steering because I can unbolt the pump and leave it in the car. I don't need to drain the oil because I'm not taking the engine apart. So I'm going to have to pull the belt off. I'm going to have to unbolt the power steering pump. I've got to, I guess, just start disconnecting everything. Man, there's so many spider webs in the engine bay just from it sitting so long. And even up under the car, look at all this. Spider webs everywhere. But it's alright. She's she'll get there. So uh, I guess I'm gonna just start disconnecting everything and start getting everything pulled apart and get the coolant drained and I'll give you guys another update here shortly. Alright guys, so I got the coolant draining. Just had to pull the plug out of the radiator. Let that finish. Getting everything out it can drain. Then I'll put the plug back in. And then I got the front mount out. It's right there. The welds broke on it. So I'm going to have to try to mock it back up. And try to get it in there where it needs to go. To try to line that up. To try to re-weld it back together. But now that I have the actual engine mount in over here on this side and welded in on the subframe now it's making the engine like before it was sagging down and that's whenever i made that mount now that it's sitting up where it's supposed to be now it's not lining up correctly so that's the whole issue is just i made it whenever the mount wasn't on when the side engine mount wasn't on so that's my fault but it happens so I've, that's just one other thing I have to do is I got to re-weld the mount for that front lower mount right there. Uh, yeah, so now that this is done draining, I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back in. I can disconnect the radiator hoses, get those out of the way, and uh, finish getting all this wiring done and uh, unhooked. So, so I guess uh, I'll give you guys another update here shortly. All right, y'all. So I was able to get the uh, coolant reservoir out. And I'm working on getting this uh, harness out so I can pull the fans out. And But yeah, making making some progress. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll give you guys another update here shortly. Alright y'all, so I got the radiator fans are out. And I just got the fuse box and the fuse box tray out and got it all unbolted. Everything's sitting over there. And I'm bagging up everything. And labeling it so I don't lose track of any bolts for anything so it's going uh, pretty good though so I got the uh, I guess what this would be the clutch line I guess going into the slave is disconnected and so I just I've got to get the uh, steering linkages got to get them off the bracket right there and I'm got to go under the dash and I've got to unbolt the harness from the ECM and pull it back through the firewall and I can just throw it over the engine. I have to unbolt the master cylinder from the brake booster and fold it over out of the way so I have room to lift the engine and trans up and I've still got to pull the wheels off and I'm going to have to disconnect the knuckles, shut to knuckles. Uh, yeah, these two right here. I'm gonna have to pull both of these out so I can rock the knuckle forward and pop the axle out of the trans on both sides. And uh, yeah, it's it's getting there. And I still gotta undo the exhaust, and I still have to remove the belt and undo the remove the power steering pump. It's just two 13 mil bolts, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, and if I remember correctly, I think. The last time I did this, I think I had to, I don't remember, I think I had to remove the oil filter housing completely to get the engine and trans to come out. So, 
that might be a pain in the ass but i do have another gasket for it so if i do it's not that big of a deal i can always pop that back on with a new gasket but uh yeah oh and i gotta get heater hoses disconnected and the lower radiator hose disconnected but it's coming along i'm making some good progress so i'm gonna keep working on this and i'll give you guys another update here shortly all right you guys so as y'all seen earlier i got the mount out and it was broke so I decided to go ahead and get out the grinder and the welder and I grinded it all down really well and then welded it up all the way around. I would just weld it in that uh, bolt hole and so I just tried to grind off all the old welds as much as I could and then just lined it back up, clamped it together and welded it back together and then I pulled the clamp off of in the middle right there and welded it up on the top and on the bottom side. And so I'm going to go around it again, make another pass all the way around. There's a couple of uh, little pinholes. So I'm going to try to fill in all the pinholes. But overall, I mean, it's not horrible. I mean, it definitely could be better. But for just doing a bunch of little tack welds here and there. So I just got to fill in some holes. And then give it a nice another coat of black paint. And hopefully this will hold up. And But I mocked it back up. And it looks like this position is still going to be fine and line up. So I guess we will see. But I'm going to go over this one more time. And then I'll give you guys another update and let you see how it fits in the car. Oh, there it is all bolted in place bolted to the mount it does look a little crooked from the top but it'll be okay it'll hold so uh, i gotta unbolt it pull it back out i'm gonna paint it black just because i've grinded it and wire wheeled it and so it's bare so i'm gonna pull it back off paint it and then whenever the engine goes back in it's ready to go and it will just go in and will be good so front engine mount done so now i've got to pull it back out paint it and uh, keep making progress progress and moving forward getting this engine and trans all disconnected get the axles out all that good stuff so y'all stay tuned and i'll give you guys another update here shortly i hear no uh squeaky squeaky Well, making good progress. The mount is back out. It is welded and painted and hung up to dry. So, not the prettiest welds ever, but as long as it holds, it, it is what it is. So, I'm going to let that dry and continue working on this. I got to get the knuckle, stretch knuckle bolts undone so I can pull the axles. I got to completely pull the shifter cables back out of the way. I got to undo the exhaust. And I still got to pull the, undo the ECU and pull the harness through the firewall. I got to get fuel rail or the fuel lines right down there. My AN fittings and I got to do the heater hoses, the lower radiator hose. So I'm going to keep working on this and I'll give you guys another update. All right, you guys. So I made some really good progress today. I've got a lot of the stuff disconnected. I've got the power steering pump over here unbolted and got the belt off. So that's all off. I got the heater hoses. I still have to get the lower radiator hose. I got the overflow tank out. Uh, I got the throttle cable disconnected from the throttle body. I, I got a lot of stuff disconnected. I was able to weld up the front mount. And get that back to where it bolts in place. And uh, yeah, I feel like I made some really good progress today. It's uh, just about 6 p.m. I've been out here since like 7.30 this morning. Plus, I was up all night messing with computers and playing some computer games. So, I'm pretty tired and I'm hungry. So, I got everything picked up. And uh, I'm about to shut down the hood of the car and lock everything up. And I'm about to go inside and eat something and then probably go take a nap. But, uh, 
Yeah, I guess uh, I will catch you guys tomorrow, first thing in the morning as soon as I wake up and it's daylight. So, y'all have a good night and I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's the next day. It's just after 12.30. It's going on 1 o'clock. So, i got to get the tools out. I'm going to move this bumper out of the way and I'm going to continue on getting everything disconnected. Uh, I guess I'm going to start with getting the wheels off and start working on pulling the axles, draining transmission fluid, and then I can move on to hoses and mounts and get the cherry picker hooked up and hopefully we'll have this thing pulled out of here today. So, so it's, uh, I'm going to get some tools out and I'll give you guys another update here shortly. Alright, I just got the wheels off. I was able to undo that ABS. Uh, plug from the ABS module got that out. I've got to undo the speed sensor and You see it's not too bad over here on this side But man come over here to this side and there's just so many spider webs and This crap in here because it's been sitting for so long So I'm gonna get the broom clean this out Get all this crap out of the way easy to work with and uh yeah i've got to get these uh strut to knuckle bolts off so i can rock the knuckle out and then that will let me pull the axles out of the transmission on both sides you can see this one's got the long axle but yeah so i'm gonna grab the broom get this cleaned up and give you guys another update right, so i've got the harness all pulled out from the firewall disconnected from the computer I got my little uh, purge valve that goes from this metal line down here to the purge valve up here on the supercharger by the throttle body. So I've got that line out of the way. I've got the brake master unbolted. Brake booster is undone. So now I just got to get those fuel lines uh, undid either from here or from the rail. Either way, either side is probably best and easiest to get them from down here um and then i need to unbolt this uh this clutch master like the line and everything from the firewall those i believe they're eight millimeter bolts so i can get that this whole line out of the way um and then i've just got to undo this harness and get it untucked it's like sitting under the brake lines but on top of the transmission so, yeah, I've got to get get that uh, unran through there so I can pull the harness up. And then it's pretty much mounts and the exhaust. And i got to pull the axles out and drain the trans fluid. Other than that, it's getting really close. So I'm going to keep working on this, and I'll give you guys another update here shortly. All right, you guys, so I was able to get both of the stretch knuckle bolts undone. Got both the axles out. It's draining its fluid right now and the fluid still looks nice and red and clean so it looks a little darker in the pan now but as it was coming out it looks really clean and I completely cleaned out the drain pan and wiped it out so there was no crap in it so once this is done draining I've got a couple of empty jugs I'm gonna probably try to dump this into and uh, try to reuse this and I've got the coolant over there. David put it in a trash bag to keep as much crap out of it. But that pan had some crap in it. So we're going to have to strain, strain that out. But I'm going to try to reuse that coolant as well. And uh, yeah, kind of go from there. So uh, I'm going to let this finish draining and dump it into a couple of jugs. And then I can continue with getting the rest of this stuff all torn apart. Made a little more progress. I've got pretty much all of the electrical stuff disconnected. Got the fuel lines disconnected, boosters disconnected. I still got to get the exhaust. Uh, I just disconnected the transmission mount on this side. I took the pan and I was able to get almost one gallon of fluid back out. So I just got this under here catching the residual. And then I also used it to catch the little bit of fuel from the fuel lines and it drips some over there as you can see but i've got to 
I'm pretty much at the spot where I need the cherry picker. So I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. And I'm going to put the chain on this front dog bone mount. And then on the top of the alternator over here. And just to kind of lift the engine and transmission up. Because I have to completely remove this mount out of my way. And so I got one bolt out. And I've still got one more. But as soon as I started loosening the other bolt, the whole transmission shifted. So I've got to lift it to remove that dead weight because i don't want to fuck up the threads uh in the transmission with having too much weight on it so i'm going to go ahead and get this cherry picker set up and uh lift the engine and trans a little bit and then uh, i'll give you guys another update all right you guys so as you can see david helped me and we got the engine trans out so it was uh, not very much left. I just had the mounts and the exhaust. And then we had to unrun this one wire. Yeah, the speed sensor. It goes from right in here. And it runs underneath the rack and pinion all the way across. And goes to the speed sensor on the passenger side. So I had, had it zip tied in like two or three places. So I had to cut zip ties. And we had to run it back under the rack and pinion. And I got the exhaust off and then that was pretty much it. it. It come right out. And then I did have to remove the oil filter housing, which kind of sucked. I didn't want to. It messed up the gasket, but I had to so we could get the clearance. But pretty much come right out. So very happy with the progress. Not bad. Two days. Got this thing out. So probably could have had it out yesterday if I wouldn't have stayed up all night and been so tired. And I was just running on no i was just running on no sleep but yeah i think uh i think we're done for tonight so we're gonna get this just set down over here to the side get everything picked up and uh tomorrow during the daylight i'll get the power washer i'll get everything power washed in the engine bay and uh get this transmission separated from the engine and get this uh clutch swapped out and this uh slave cylinder and Get her slapped back in there with a bunch of fresh brand new parts and get everything locked tighted and torqued down and I think we'll be good to go. And then uh, I've got to get some oil so I can do an oil change because, you know, it's the ED5 car and the ED5 makes your oil kind of milky. So especially when you don't drive it, you just let it run for five or ten minutes, which is what I've been doing for like the past, what, year, nine months. Yeah, something like that. So... Yeah, I started every once in a while, let it run for a few, get up to temp, and kill it. I haven't really got to drive it, so it's got a lot of condensation in the oil. So, yeah, i definitely going to have to do an oil change, kind of flush it out. But, man, really not bad. Very happy with the progress. So, I guess we're going to get everything picked up and catch you guys tomorrow in the daylight. All right, you guys, so it's 9.21 p.m. Engine is out. Everything's picked up. Shed is locked up. So car is locked up. So I guess uh guess I'm gonna go inside and take a shower, change, play some video games for a little bit, and uh I'll be back out here tomorrow in the daylight. I'll get the power washer out and I'm gonna power wash the car and the engine bay and the wheels <clears throat> and we'll get the clutch done and get everything all back together. And then uh, maybe even get this thing stabbed back in the car tomorrow also. So we'll, we'll just have to see. But yeah, I'm going to go inside to take a shower and change. So y'all have a good night and uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow.